a, a small business just getting into it, what is the quickest path from zero dollars in government sales to a quarter million in government sales? Um, so one is subcontracting, right? Um, because sometimes it's what I find is the, the hardest part a lot of times is how to get that very first contract because you don't have any past performance working with the government, you know, previously. And so how do you how do you build that past performance? So one is is subcontracting. So looking for small things. So, you know, just to be to be very honest, a lot of mature government contractors, if they see something come out that it looks like it's going to be like fifty to seventy five thousand dollars, they're not going to go after it because to them it's just not worth the time. It's not worth the time and effort. But for you, yeah. if you're if you're brand new and you're just trying to get your foot in the door, a fifty thousand dollar effort is that's great. Like it's worth doing. And so looking for don't overlook the small things, the little things, because it, it's all about getting some past performance and then also being able to kind of get your foot in the door. Because if you can do that small thing and do it well, then you've got an opportunity to expand on that and, you know, and then come back and say, hey, we did this for you. We knocked it out for you. Is there anything else that we can do? You know, we, we'd love to, you know, we love working with you. We'd love to do something else for you. Um, and so don't overlook the very small things. Um, and then you know anything under two hundred fifty thousand uh, dollars can be done as simplified acquisition. Um, so again, just looking for those smaller efforts. Um, the other thing is like making sure that you respond to RFIs, uh, requests for information, because I, and this is this is a sore subject, right? Because a lot of companies are just like, man, we hate responding to RFIs. It's a waste of time. We 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 put all this time and effort into putting this response together. We send it in, and it's a black hole, and we never hear anything back. Mm -hmm. That is not an unfair characterization of a lot of RFIs. That's that's totally fair. And I completely understand where, why people are frustrated with it. On the other hand, um, the government does the RFIs for a reason. They're doing market research and they're trying to find companies that can do this. Mm -hmm. If no one responds to it, then they don't really have a reason to set it aside for small businesses because they don't see any small businesses that say that they're capable of doing it. So I would definitely respond to RFIs um, and be thoughtful in the response. Don't just send your capability sheet in actually have put a thoughtful response together. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to spend weeks on it, um, but you can take some time to do a little research on the office and research on the requirement and then put together a thoughtful response on how you could handle that. A lot of times what I've been seeing more lately is that the government does these RFIs and then based on the responses, they do what's called a limited source selection, which means that they make, if they get 10 responses back and four of those responses are really good, they may go directly to those four companies only and say, hey, give us a proposal for this RFP where we're giving this to you on a limited, you know, and only to you. Yeah. This happens more often than you would think. Um, and it happens a lot on GSA schedule. This is another reason why it's important to have a GSA schedule because this happens quite a bit that the government will use the GSA schedule as kind of a barometer to say, okay, so we feel like if the company has gone to enough trouble to get themselves on GSA schedule and that they have, you know, they've had their financial systems checked and they've, they, they've gone to enough effort to put themselves in position to do this, we're going to start with these companies, right? This is why we're going to start with companies who are on GSA schedule and we're going to do an RFI out to those companies. And then if we get good responses back, then we'll go directly to those companies and say, okay, you give us a, a response on, on doing this. So that's another way I feel like to get yourself um, in good position to do that. So that, so like, so to summarize is like, look for subcontracting opportunities. Don't overlook the very small opportunities because they can turn into bigger ones. And you can also, it's a good way to build your past performance and you may not have as much competition in going after the very small ones because a lot of your more mature government contractors may not bother with it. And then also responding to RFIs because it can put you in a really good position potentially to have be kind of competing against a smaller number of companies to go after something.